Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 22, uh, creating a Google ad uh, walkthrough. And so I'm going to be talking about how to create a Google text ad uh, from planning all the way through to publish. Um, just really taking you through that process, because I know for some, it can be a bit confusing. There's a lot of different terminology going on. So let's just do it. I'll show you how I do it. Maybe you've got some other ideas as well. And it's just going to give you something to get started. Uh, just for those who are new to the club, hello, my name's Ben. Um, I've worked with over 500 businesses now since we started Rather Inventive. Um, broadly speaking, to do better business, but um, I mean, it's in a variety of different areas from, from marketing, helping them with their strategy, a lot of web development, something I'm particularly interested in, uh, especially the technical side of it. Um, video, I think video is so important in today's marketing and uh, there's so many um, ways you can use it. And then also analyzing, sort of looking at um, the data and seeing if you can uh, infer from that uh, and make better judgments and decisions for the future. Um, you should check out our previous webinars. We've got another previous 20, 21 of them. So there's lots and lots of different areas. Um, there's also on the Clubhouse, there are lots of resources. And also added to all of this is a regular podcast. So that comes out every two weeks. You should be getting a newsletter with a link to that podcast, which could be some old material that's still relevant that we've uh, that Claire and I have trimmed up, um, or it could be some new material or something sort of revisiting different areas. So do sign up to the podcast. That's going to be a, a nice sort of pulse every single every two weeks, and then we've got these webinars as well. If you need anything, you can't find anything, email me support at ratherinventive.com. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about advertising, and I just thought I would. Uh, Sort of give me my opinion on advertising and where it sits within marketing. I think advertising is important. It is because uh, certainly if you have no visibility to the market at all, and it's very difficult for you to get found by other people, advertising can be a really good way to get started. Personally, I wouldn't rely on advertising as your only way of um, selling a product or letting people know about what you do but it's a really good way to get started and it can be really useful as part of the marketing mix, but it can get quite expensive. So um, if it's working for you, it's, it, can, it can be really good, but just you've got to watch the costs. However, the reason I say don't rely on it is because I really, uh, I think there's, there's two sides to marketing. Um, I know HubSpot talk a lot about this, but you've got inbound and outbound marketing. Outbound marketing is where you are going out to your customer. You are pushing information at them. You're potentially disrupting them from what they're doing. So it could be a phone call. It could be an advert in the middle of a TV program or um, uh, yeah, an ad in the middle of blog content or something like that. And usually it's quite disruptive. You're trying to get attention by getting in the face of your customer. It can be very effective if you need to get that reach, but you've got to realize that you are taking attention away from what they really want, which is that video, that blog content, um, whatever it may be. You know, that maybe they're searching for organic information on um, Google uh, or how to to do something and your ad is getting in the way of that. So you've just got to be respectful of uh, people's time, which is why I prefer inbound, which is where you put out information like um, a how-to guide or you put some free information out there or you you give uh, a video that explains how to do something or gives your insight, whatever it may be, but you focus your marketing on putting out bits of information that people will find. Your customer will find it online and share it with other people and come to you. It's better that way if you can do it. However, advertising is great if you need to get started, but I think it's important you should know that where possible, try and do inbound marketing. So put information out there for people to find, but to help kick things off, use some outbound marketing, uh, advertising, maybe telesales if it's relevant uh, to, to get things going. It can also be good to combine the two. So maybe you could use some sort of lead generation system where you put out an advert which gets people to come to your website where they fill out a form where you can follow up by, email, uh, by phone call or you put a really good blog post out that people will be searching for or share online, they come through, fill out a form, then you can follow up with a telephone call. So there's ways of mixing the two together. Anyway, I won't, I won't go on about that too much. So today we're gonna to use an example of CCTV logbook. 
Now, this is a new sort of venture stroke application um, from Eclipse, and they um, it's essentially an audit system for CCTV cameras. Um, in essence, quite simple, but there is nothing like it on the market. In fact, the only thing like it on the market is actually a physical logbook, which maybe the CCTV engineer would hand over to the owner of the new system, the business, um, with, uh, at best, all of the CCTV um, cameras and recording equipment listed in that logbook. And so when they come back, just like a car service manual, they can sort of note down the dates, everything's been audited. But more often than not, what happens is they don't get that book. There's no kind of handover document at all. No one knows what's been installed. They might have an invoice for the individual items, but no one knows what's been installed, what's been plugged in where, what it's connected to on the computer network and that sort of thing. And no one maintains it. No one looks at it until it goes wrong. So the whole point of a CCTV logbook, like any audit system, is that you know what you've got and you have a regular maintenance schedule to it. So... Uh, it's really important for maybe people who are managing the security of a site, however big that is, maybe over multiple sites. So they need to know what assets they have, when they were last checked, if they're still working, because that's important, because they're, they're responsible for security, so they don't want that to go down. Um, they need to maybe have a full uh, audit uh, history in there, so they know, uh, so they can start planning replacement of equipment. They want it to be easy to use, of course, um, save time where possible. I mean, if, if, if a product can save you time, then that's the benefit you want you, you want to create, save time or money. Um, it could save time instead of having an engineer come in every couple of years because they need some cameras installing and they have to do a full audit to find out what's working, what, what system they, they can connect to. If you've already got that logbook, then they can look in the logbook, know it's up to date and then um, advise based on that. Also, with um, privacy and GDPR, it's important to be compliant with that, particularly with CCTVs that might be overlooking public spaces. So you need to be very considerate of that uh, and need to make sure you're complying with your legal obligations. So basically, that's the history. That's what they were trying to do. Um, now, like everything, it all co advertising comes down to planning, particularly because there's a lot of money involved or can be a lot of money. Um, I think I wouldn't go into Google Ads lightly with a very small budget. I would look to have a realistic budget and aim to um, to try and spend that as wisely as possible. But you're not going to get away with 20 quid. It's more likely to be a few hundred pounds, if not a thousand pounds. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to put you off, but you should go into it with your eyes open and say, well, if I'm going to spend the money, I'm going to spend the time preparing so that money is more wisely spent. So you really want to know what the goal is. What do you actually want to happen? Now, you can break that down into, well, maybe I want people to um, fill out a form. So like with our Inventive Marketing Club, maybe I want to create um, an advert which um, will be uh, sort of triggering, triggering off someone's pain point. So they have an issue with something. Maybe they need help with SEO. So I could create a campaign which says I can help with SEO and then lead them through to a dedicated landing page saying you can get help with SEO and more by signing up to our marketing club. So something like that. So you want to think about the goal of what you actually want to happen. Do you want to generate more sales? What pages you want people to go through? I think it's really important that you know what you want to happen because that's fundamental really to, to the whole exercise. Also, and this is crucial too, who is it for? Who you do you actually want to click on that uh, link? It's not going to be everyone because it's going to cost you a fortune. You could put an ad out that's really broad, captures lots of people. But what you're going to be doing because of the way Google ad works is be, you'll be paying for every single click, which is great if they're highly targeted people that you want to attract to your website. But if they're not, you're just paying for people who are going to go to your website and bounce away again. And at worst, what's going to happen is that the bouncing away and having irrelevant people clicking through may actually make, make it cost more for you over time. So you do want your ads and um, your landing page to be completely relevant. So let's just think about the money. You don't want to waste money. You want to target people specifically. So try and be as targeted as you can. Or if you can't, um, try and split out into multiple campaigns and then maybe um, time it in over time. So be broad, but be aware that it's going to cost you more money. But then um, 
look at the keywords people are using and the different types of people using it and then bring it in over time. But think about who is this for and what are their needs? What are you trying? What problems have they got that you're going to help them with? Uh, benefits as well. Why does your product matter, basically? And that just aligns with the audience. So you've got an audience. They've got some problems, uh, some needs, some pain points, and your product has a benefit. It will satisfy those. How does it do it? Why does it matter? Um, and the reason that's important, because that can form the basis of your ad copy, which is probably the bit I find hardest, not being a copywriter. And budget. Now, if you have, uh, I think the best way to work out budget is to know what the cost of acquisition is. So it's to really understand how much it costs you as a business to acquire a customer. Now, it may be that you sell shoes and so you um, you know the cost of shoes, you know the profit um, and you know how many visits to your website it takes before people put it in the basket and buy it. And that's going to give you a rough idea of um, customer acquisition. Um, what you don't necessarily know is the cost, but you might have an idea. Well, we say we pay for magazine ads. We do some SEO. Maybe we have a website uh, developer, maybe other things that you do. That gives you a broad cost. Well, you can take that cost and just divide it by the number of orders you get. And it's going to give you a rough idea of acquisition cost. Once you have that, that might give you um, at least a budget you can work with. You can make some guesses and say, OK, if I can get 10 people to click through, and I know that my conversion rate is um, 50%, then I'm going to get five people actually buying, and you can work it backwards from there. You can work out how much you can actually spend. So if it's 50%, you might want to double that um, and say, well, it costs me £10 to get a customer, therefore I'm happy to pay a little bit more than that um, to, actually, to actually get them through, through the gate. So... If you do know your acquisition cost, then that's going to make things a lot easier for you. If you have no idea, just guess. So sort of work with the money that you've got available and say, OK, I can lose 200 quid, 500 pounds on this. I can lose because I'd assume because you're basically risking the money. I would assume you can lose that. And then that's your budget. What I would quickly do, like everything else I'm going to talk about, is review and monitor regularly over the next few days you put the advert live, um, weeks and months, and keep refining, keep honing, keep improving the efficiency of your advert um, because you want that money to go as far as possible. OK, so basically set out your goal, understand the audience, who's going to be, who you're helping, who's it for, how your product actually helps them, and then what you're going to spend on it. What's your budget? I think it's good to have a, an idea. OK, so I'm going to give two examples maybe for CCTV Logbook. Um, so campaign number one is this is aimed at security managers. So maybe there's um, a, a company that has got a couple of different sites and they've got someone in, in, uh, who's responsible for security. So their job is to make sure the whole, all of the sites are secure. So their concern, it goes beyond CCTV, but CCTV is part of that. Um, and they need to make sure, because they're responsible, that everything has been maintained correctly. The cameras don't just stop working, so they've got some planned replacement um, in place. Um, and that they're not wasting time, because they probably have budget constraints, so they don't necessarily want to call in external engineers too often, or they want to manage that process so they, they, can, um, they know when those costs are going to take place. So really, as a security manager, I think they, they really need to know when their assets are going to be maintained and um, understanding when costs may occur, so planning for that. Um, because it's not a case of uh, their, the CCTV systems are just a cost. They're a necessity because it's important as part of their role. Um, so the goal for this particular campaign for, for this example is we want them to sign up for a trial walkthrough webinar. So actually, when I was talking with Nikki from, from Eclipse about um, CCTV log, what we felt actually might be quite useful to have a walkthrough. So rather than just leaving people cold to go through the trial themselves, we get them to sign up to sort of a, a white glove walkthrough, as I called it, which, which means that they sign up to effectively a short one-to-one 30-minute -one, uh, um, screen share where Nikki could take them through the process, get them signed up, get on some of their assets and take them through that process. So that's what, um, because I know that's one of the biggest um, stumbling blocks when it comes to new applications is getting your existing data in. It's a big pain. So we want to overcome that. So if we can get as the goal people to sign up to a trial 
so we can walk them through the webinar. Happy days. Um, the benefits of the CCTV system uh, for this audience are is a default, um, sorry, a detailed asset log, really, of all the cameras, hardware, recording equipment, uh, if they've got any networking involved, what plug sockets those go in, um, what rack numbers and so on. It's got all of that detail online uh, in a way that they could sort of walk around with a tablet and, and do a manual audit themselves so they can check everything's correct. Uh, it even goes into detail like you can see uh, an example uh, screenshot from that camera. So if the camera, as you're doing your audit, doesn't match up with that screenshot, then you know something's wrong. Maybe the camera's been knocked uh, by a bird or the wind has moved it and it needs to be um, reconfigured because otherwise it's not working to the security profile that you want. You also want a full audit history. You know you want to see which engineers or which staff members have been doing what to which cameras, even if it's just cleaning them. Um, obviously, you want it to be easy, easy to use. Everything should be as easy to use um, and saving time as well. You know, If they've got a budget they've got to stay to, uh, fix, fixed to, then uh, saving time is incredibly important. Um, and then we can guess the budget as well. I mean, this is, again, tricky, but I've just put £600 a month to this as a guess. That, that equates to about £20 a day. Um, you've got to start somewhere. You may want to increase that budget if it starts working, um, or if it doesn't work, then you want to bin the campaign and start again, but you need to start somewhere. So that's one campaign. That's really looking at the security manager. Another campaign, a different way of looking at it, and I'm not gonna walk through this process, but you may want to try it um, in your own. Maybe I'll, I'll do another walkthrough uh, next year is rather than getting people to land on a particular page, is you could get them to watch a video on YouTube. I mean, to be honest, you could get them to go to your website and then watch the video there, but it's just as easy that you just take them to, to YouTube. Um, it's slightly different with Google Ads to do that, but um, essentially you're, you're, you're doing the same thing. You are paying for someone to uh, watch a video rather than click throughs. Anyway, I'm not gonna go through that now, but in terms of the campaign, you might want to think, well, the goal is we want them to watch a video um, on how to manage GDPR and privacy for CCTV. Now, this would be aimed at potentially the business owners of that site who are ultimately and legally responsible for um, making sure that there are no privacy or data leaks. So the business owners need to comply with that. Um, uh, and they're at risk of a fine if they don't. So it really is crucial for them. That's a fear almost that you can um, you can sort of lean on. The benefits to them is that the system would be GDPR compliant and help them comply. So it's not just the system itself is compliant, but it would help make sure that what they're doing is compliant by working through a series of steps that the government put out uh, from the SEC, I think, to make sure they comply. And it reduces that risk of fine. So. It's basically understanding best practice and then being able to go through that is going to is going to help a business owner understand that this tool is a useful tool um, for them and it's going to help mitigate these risks. It's probably it may be that the business owner doesn't use the software and that they'll pass this uh, link for the free trial onto their security manager and say, hey, I need this because I don't want the risk of being fined. So you need to check out this system. So you can always think around the um, the problem and say, well, we've got one audience who use a product, but then you've got another audience who pay for it or who are at risk if they don't use something like that. So it's always worth thinking around that. I, I put a smaller budget on this. Usually um, YouTube video watches, you get a lot more watches um, for, for your money. You don't necessarily get website clicks. They do cost more, but uh, you can have a lower budget for, for video watches just because it's a lot easier for people to do it. So the cost seems to be lower. So I put £300 a month here as a guess. OK, um, some more detail on audience. If you haven't seen this already, I do recommend you going through um, IMC webinar number 11, Understanding Your Customer, where I take you through the process in more detail. And it's going to help you come up with a lot of the information I've got here. Nikki and I have already been through this process. Uh, we had a call the other day where we went through that. So we're able to um, put this together a lot more easily. But if you don't know where to start in terms of your audience, I do suggest you check this out. Okay, shall we do the walkthrough? Let's see if it works. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to my screen. Okay, hopefully you can see that.
So this is um, this is the current site for CCTV Logbook. We're, we're building a new uh, website. This was just something uh, quickly developed by the app developers. We're putting a new one in place, and that's why we're preparing the ads. So this just gives you some context on the on the the, the program itself. So let's start at the beginning. The first thing we need to do is some research. Where do we start? You know, what um, what keywords do we use? The easiest thing really uh, is just to type in CCTV logbook and see what comes up. And I'm going to do two levels of research, like a quick a quick research where you're just using Google like this and going through and picking out keywords and something more detailed. I'm going to run through both. If you don't have time, just start with the quick research. Just do this. But I would recommend, as I said before, planning is everything. Spend your time now because it might save you some money later or at least make it easier for you to identify what's working and what's not. So the first thing to do is just type in the keyword CCTV, CCTV logbook and just note down other key phrases that relate to it. So um, we've obviously got, um, here is an ad actually for CCTV logbook. That's one of the ones already running. Um, there's a slightly different spelling here with a space between log and book. I mean, they all tend to be very specific. In fact, this particular search, people look for a logbook. What they're actually looking for is a physical book often, a lot of the time. They don't realize because th 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 there are uh, digital systems available, so they're just looking for the book. So actually, a lot of the other links here, apart from the Amazon one, are PR that um, uh, Eclipse are already doing as part of this product. So, you know, this isn't too fruitful. But we have a look through it quite, might be quite good as part of this i'd recommend that you actually go into some of these um websites and have a look to see what other keywords they're using but basically we've identified two here cctv logbook and cctv log space book as well you should also scroll down to the bottom and see if there's any keywords that you saw here maybe adding templates going to give us something different um i know with um a lot of software that some people might be looking at a free version so it might be they're looking for a PDF that they can download and print themselves because they think, I don't need software to do that because they've only got three cameras. Well, that's fine. Um, and it could be um, that you might want to do that. You might want to say, actually, I could capture that smaller traffic for smaller businesses because they may well become um, bigger users of more cameras in the future. But Initially, I'd keep it focused. So, so that wasn't too fruitful, but we've got a couple of keywords there, CCTV logbook and with a space in it as well. So let's try a different one. What was the other one I tried? CCTV audio, I think. So let's pop that in there too. Okay, CCTV audit procedure, full audit, audit log. So these, this is really give, giving an example of what an, uh, an audit might be and how it might work. And, uh, a checklist as well. So if you're going around um, looking at your CCV system, you've got a checklist of what what you should be looking for. Um, and then actually down the bottom, we can see there's some more here. So compliance checklist, that's great. Uh, camera inspection checklist, handover document. So that there's actually starting to be a bit more information of um, what you could be um, what could be quite helpful. So basically what we want you to do during this period is just collect keywords, key phrases that you think are gonna to relate to your audience to one of the campaigns you're doing. Um, and I'm just take, talking about the first campaign at the moment. So I'm just looking at security managers and the sorts of things that they might be looking for. Um, Cause I'm not really sure yet exactly what keywords they use. So once you've built up a big list and I've got, I've got one copied off screen here, is um, you, you could just go straight in and start producing an ad in, in Google, but I wouldn't recommend that. I'd recommend doing a bit more research and um, just really seeing which keywords they recommend. So I would dive into Google Keyword Planner, which is a tool provided by Google AdWords. So I'm not gonna go into how you do this, but you need to set up a Google account, uh, a Google Ads account. So first you need a Google account, once you have that, you need to go to um, ads.google.com and you need to sign up for an ads account and you need to go through the process of setting everything up, getting all your payment information in there. It will even, uh, I believe, try and take you through creating an ad to begin with. I would try and skip through that process and once you've got it set up, then go back through, make sure you've got your research done and then go and set up an ad in the way I'm going to show you. It may be that you just need to make sure you're on the more advanced version of Google ads, uh, give me a shout if you've got any issues with that. 
that bit. But everything else from that point should be fairly straightforward. Okay, first thing we want to do is see if Google knows any other keywords that might be useful. So we want to click on, um, oh, Google Planner, by the way, is up in Tools. So if you click on Tools, you've got Planning and then Keyword Planner here. Once you're on there, you click on Discover New Keywords. And I am just going to copy in my list straight into here. But basically, you would just type a keyword, comma, space, and keep typing, and then it generates this little list for you. And then I can click Get Results. Before I do that, you can actually just, um, if you don't know where to start, you can just, and you've, your website has already been developed, you can just pop in your website, and it's going to go through the site or that particular page uh, and look at look for keywords that might be useful. But I'm just going to do it this way. So now Google does its thing. It's taking all those keywords I put in um, and it's giving me some useful information. It's telling me um, under average monthly searches how many, on average this is, because it is going to vary, um, how many people search for that particular keyword. Now, in this case, it's fairly low. It's quite a niche thing that people want. Um, in your case, depending on what your keywords you're putting in, it could be quite wild and high. Um, but the key things you want to be looking at here is alongside each keyword is how many monthly searches they've got. And you want to be aiming for the high ones if possible, because you're going to have more people searching for them and what competition it's got. Ideally, you want a mix of highest number of searches and lowest number of competition. But you're going to have to use your judgment on that. And ultimately, this is just a guessing game to begin with. We're just collecting information. When we come down the line, we can refine the ad further on. So what we can see here is actually the ones at the top, CCTV logbook, um, CCTV audit, audit report, and so on. They've got quite a low amount of searches. I can see here that actually audit template uh, sometimes peaks as a few more. So it's a bit up and down, whereas the rest are a bit more on average, 20, uh, 10. Uh, audit software is a lot higher. But what's key here is that audit software is very broad. Audit software can could... Um, could be for any particular area. People might be looking for um, computer audit software or basically anything. Uh, it could be financial audit software. It's a very broad keyword. And it might be that you go, oh, I get lots of monthly searches on that. But because it's not specific to your niche or to what you're trying to promote, you are going to be paying for a lot of chaff, a lot of people who are clicking on that, coming through, and they're not interested because what you are advertising is not specific um, is not, you're, you're basically setting the wrong expectation. They're typing in the keyword, clicking on your ad, believing it's something that can help them, and it's the wrong sort of audit software. They're, they're actually looking for something broader. So it is important that you try and narrow down your focus as much as possible at this phase. There's no reason why you can't add multiple campaigns, and then you can track the best ones, you can switch them on and off. I would try and keep things as narrow as possible. So ultimately, we want to um, discover new keywords on here. Um, sorry, we want to look through and find the, the best keywords that we should be using, um, low competition, and then see if there's any other keywords further down in the keyword ideas section where you can, uh, where Google throws up other keywords that might be related. Now, I've had a look through these already, and I don't think many were related at all. And in fact, we can see that it's Google's assuming when you say audit software or auditing, you're talking about computer auditing uh, or very much broad hardware auditing. So it's not so relevant to us. So we might want to avoid these. So, um, but your process is going to be different. I would just use this tool as a way of understanding what keywords are available, whether people are actually searching for some of these keywords, and whether Google has um, keywords that are going to be useful to you. Um, so once we've done that, um, we want to um, basically see if. Um, get an idea of roughly what the costs are going to be. So um, what I'm going to do is let's go back here and go into get search volume and forecasts. And I'm going to paste our keywords in there. Obviously, you'll be building up your keyword list as you're doing this. I've just got it pasted in a document. So get started. So what this is going to do is it's going to show all of those keywords and it's going to attribute a cost per click to each one. And it's going to give us a guess for the next month. Um, it's not predicting the future. It's just guessing based on past history and trends. Google knows a lot of information, what might happen and what your costs would be. Now, our budget is £20 a day. So 
if we click on this little drop down, uh, oh, why isn't that changing it now? I've put <laughs> everything is different. Um, I can't seem to put it in. Let's see if I can get it to clicks. That's better. There we go. For some, for some reason, something had changed there. Um, what I want to do is just set the cost, which we can see here as I hover, to 20 pounds or near, near as possible to 20 pounds. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us an idea, if we're looking um, down here, about what the cost is going to be over, um, over the period of time um, that we want to... Uh, that we want to run the campaign. It's going to say how much cost we're going to spend for um, to, to actually get some return back. So what we can see here is, um, I think this is per day as well. What it's assuming here is it's going to, uh, actually most of them are so low, we don't really, it can't really gauge the number of clicks for each one. So it's just sharing information for CCTV logbook and audit software. Well, I think audit software is a bit too broad here. So I'm going to ignore that. Um, and maybe even let's go back to our plan. Whoops. Let's go back and start again in our plan and we'll just take audit software out. Uh, uh, there we go. I don't want that included. Brilliant, and let's just set our cost to 20 pounds, brilliant. So now it's saying per day, the cost could be 20 pounds and we are gonna get around 250 impressions, which means hopefully we'll be shown 250 times to people and get 17 clicks. So it's giving the average cost per click of one pound 15 um, and a click through rate of 7%, which is good if we can achieve that. I mean, really we want a click through rate of um, uh, around 1.5%. If it's lower than that, it means your ads just aren't stimulating people to click, which is a, then a sign to Google that your ads aren't very relevant um, to the keyword searches. So you do want a high click-through rent rate. So yeah, we'll go with that. I like that as an idea. So if you're um, running these campaigns for, on behalf of someone else, you can go back and you can start predicting, predicting what the costs are gonna be. And you can say, well, let's assume this is right. Um, let's use the conversion rates from um, that we know from, from history and we can say, if we get 17 clicks through, we know our conversion rate is 15%. And so you can work out how many orders you might, sorry, 50%, how many orders you might actually get from that and what the cost will be. So happy days. It's, it can be useful to start predicting these things um, to see how you go. Okay. So that's really useful to get started. Next thing we want to do is actually start creating the campaign. So let's jump over to that. Okay, now in the background, what I've done is from the campaigns I've already produced and shared with you, I have um, just sort of brainstormed some ideas about what the copy could be. Just sort of just rough ideas about what, what copy you need, what keywords, what interests people, benefits and so on, because that's something that will be um, we will be wanting to use as we're going through the ad creation process. It's sometimes it's easier to do that in advance because you'll just find it a bit easier as we go through later. So when we click on a new campaign, um, I would say this is the best path to follow for this type of ad I'm talking about. If you're doing video ads like the other campaign example, you, you can do different parts here. So I want you to click on website traffic and then just search. So that means we're just showing up in Google search. You can obviously see there's other ways of doing it like video, display ads on other people's websites and so on. Let's put in the business website. There we go, continue. Okay, so now we start creating the campaign. So this is, oh, have I, sorry, did I do the wrong one? Okay, I clicked on website traffic. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to click on leads, sorry, and then search. And then website visits, there we go, business website. That's what I wanted. Great. 
And so now we've got campaign name. I suggest just putting the main focus keyword after it so we know what we are looking at. Let's just copy that in. That's just going to help keep all of the campaigns clear. It, it's really important you try and name the campaigns as close as you can to the content that's going to be in them because um, it's going to keep you sane as you're going through the whole process. But also in terms of reviewing and data, when you're looking at Google Analytics and you're seeing all these clicks come in, um, each of these clicks will be tagged with the campaign name. So you can work out which is doing best from that. OK, now um, it would be best just to focus your efforts in a moment on um, just getting your, your search, your impressions to show up in Google search. So we are just going to disable or turn off search network and display network. That just means it's not going to show on any other websites apart from Google. And the reason for that is you might get um, you might get a lot of clicks that don't add so much value because people aren't being so specific. It might be an ad that's being um, put in line on a blog as someone's reading it and they might accidentally click it. So great for Google because I think they can get um, extra visibility that way. And might be good for you if you just want to get seen by everyone and you've got a big budget. But I'd say if you're keeping your budget small, turn those off. Um, there's some more settings in here. We'll just push those down. We um, The start date will be by default today's date. I would recommend putting an end date in as well for about 30 days time. So this means in case you forget that the advert's running, you know you've got a maximum limit, in this case about 600 quid, um, and you're not gonna end up with thousands of pounds down the line. <clears throat> so I definitely put an end date in um, to make sure you don't run over. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't review it quick more quickly. I recommend you review your ads on um, certainly a couple of days after to make sure it's all running, and then maybe the next week to, to see how things are doing, and then maybe weekly really, if you've got the time to do that. Once you know an advert is working reasonably well, you might be able to leave it a bit longer and just check it every month and just tweak it. But I'd recommend that you look at it weekly initially. So put an end date in to begin with. Once you're happy, you can just let it run forever. Um, we also want to put in an ad schedule. Um, at, by default, it's going to show your ad at any time of day. What I'd recommend is you just reduce that down a little bit and make it between 7a in the morning and 10am at night and also separate it up on the weekends. It's going to mean you're going to remove some of that chaff again, that stuff that just isn't productive. You know, it's unlikely that your audience is going to be up and researching at that time. It's possible, but it's unlikely. So I would just rule that out. And so if we just change all days to Mondays and Fridays, set this in at 7 a.m., 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and then we'll add in the weekend as well. And all that means is when you're looking at the reporting, you're able to see those two um, ad schedules that you've set up and see which is performing best. It may be the weekends are really good, in fact, and maybe that you want to put more money to get more people on those days and less money during the week. But it just helps split things up to make it easier for you to review. Whoops. There we go. OK, so we've got our schedule set in there. So scrolling down, we've got target audiences. I'm not going to dive into this too much, but it is worth um, at the very least targeting to the UK if that's where you're based. If you've got um, a really super local product or like some of our customers, they've got uh, a band of the country they're allowed to operate in or that they um, you know, maybe they've got um, a sort of a license to operate in a certain area, so they don't really want to pay for leads outside of that area because they have to give them back into the group, um, that you can actually start going into locations and being very specific. I'll just show you that very briefly. You know, maybe that you want to target something like Hereford, Herefordshire. Um, it may be Gloucestershire. So maybe you can target those areas. You can also go in and do radial searches as well. So I want to search, I want to get people who are, uh, let's say, 50 miles around London. Um, I didn't do that, sorry. There we are, type London, 50 miles. There we go. 
Because it may be, um, if I'm providing a service, maybe I'm uh, some sort of contractor, building contractor, and I'm based around London, I might want to say, well, I'm happy to drive 50 miles anywhere around there, so I only want to fix it in that position. Something like CCTV Logbook, it's open to anyone in the UK, in fact, around the world, but you might want to focus just on the UK to begin with, uh, and you probably want to then run separate campaigns for different countries so you can manage things. But we are going to leave all that because I'm not interested in doing that. So let's cancel back, delete these, and we're going to go to the UK. Everything else we're going to leave. Um, there are audiences here where if you are doing retargeting or you are wanting to set up specific tar um, audiences that focus in that have an interest in certain areas, then you can select those. I recommend leaving that for the moment, just having broad. Um, you may want to try and refocus your ad later, but just keep it broad on the audience for the moment. Right, now we get down to the money. So we know that we are 600 pounds a month, 20 pounds a day, so let's pop that in. And we want to focus on conversions. I'm not really gonna to talk too much about conversions, but you do want to make sure that um, on your website, you have a page that you've dedicated as the sort of conversion page. Now, if it's an e-commerce site, that's going to be uh, the purchase or the checkout pages. If it's something like CCTV, it could be the sort of thank you registration page. That's going to be the goal. We want to set that up as a goal in Google Analytics and then import that through into um, Google AdWords. I'll see if I can just show you that here, see if it's loaded up. So if you go into tools, oops, tools and then conversion, it's gonna bring you to a screen before this. I don't really want to show you because of their data, but it's gonna bring you to a screen before this and then you can click on import. And um, as long as your account is connected to Google Analytics, you can then import from Google. Otherwise, you can set up your own goals here and then you have to go and put code into your website to track that information. It's a little bit more tricky to set up. If you don't have a thing set up, then um, then you can go in and just say, well, I want to focus on clicks. That's what I want a lot of. But <clears throat> I would say that most people want a conversion. You don't just want people to click through. You want to find the right people who are going to click and convert. And, and Google is going to do that based on its knowledge. It's going to have people that look like lookalike audiences, very similar to Facebook, where it's going to start giving you people who convert better based on its analysis of their traffic. Um, it doesn't tell, give you any of that information. That's just what it's going to do. So ideally, you want conversions if you can set that up. And then some other things here. Have I missed anything? No, right. So we might want to add some site links. And these are basically additional links that show beneath your advert, which take people to specific pages on your site. So I've got a couple of examples I've pre-added in here. One is the CCTV best practice, because it may be that they're actually quite keen on that. And so that allows them to jump straight into that section, or we got free trial, so they can jump straight to the free trial page. Now just to, you can obviously just add them using the button at the bottom, but if not, you've got a little edit button here, and you can see I've just put in the text and the link it goes to. So I'm gonna tick both of those, and it can give you a little preview based on some of the content it's already got in there. So they're just little links that appear beneath it. Another thing they do is they make the ad bigger, so it's more of a draw to the eye. Um, I'm not gonna worry about call out extensions, they're just additional bits of uh, information. Maybe you want to put things like uh, free trial, secure, um, GDPR, um, comply, compliant, that sort of thing. I think site links are probably better if, if you can work with those. Um, you can have up to four, I think, at the moment. So um, I think stick with site links. What could be useful though is to put a call extension in. So this mean, this just shows your telephone number on the ad. Um, they don't actually have one for CCTV logbooks. I'm not gonna use it, but if you wanted one, you could, you could have this. Uh, you could add your phone number in there, add it as a call extension. And that means when the ad is shown on a mobile device, they can click to call straight away on there and that's gonna count as conversion. So it depends on your business as to whether that's relevant. Again, if you're a contractor, that could be exactly what you want people to call you straight away. Um, uh, let me turn the number off actually there. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna leave all the other ad, ad extensions, but there are lots of them that might be relevant to you, particularly if you've got products or promotions that you're trying to share. So let's leave it at that and save and continue. 
So now we're gonna move on and start actually setting up the ads, as long as I've not missed anything. Okay, so now this is where we're focusing this campaign on CCTV logbook. Um, because that's that's the area I want to focus on specifically for this. That's the key phrase. And so what we'll do is we'll call the ad group CCTV logbook two. So we know we're focused on that particular keyword. <clears throat> that's also going to help because it will be any links and clicks will be tagged. And so in Google Analytics, you can actually break the campaign down to see which ones have been performing best. So we're just going to call that um, ad group CCTV logbook. It could be. I probably wouldn't recommend this, but you could have separate um, ad groups for the, for the different types of key phrases you're using. Um, certainly speaking to a colleague of mine, he advocates very much for having the whole campaign just about a specific keyword with one ad group and then all the keywords underneath that. I would keep it a little bit simpler to begin with until you're comfortable with adverts, then maybe you want to do that. He just finds that's the easiest way to basically see which campaigns are working from a top level. And also then um, it gives more relevance all the way down the line. And that can decrease the cost of what you pay. But let's keep things simple to begin with. One campaign, uh, one ad group. And then I have a list of keywords. Now, which can be targeting CCTV logbook, but also CT CCTV space log space book. Um, so now what you could do it's actually put in some default keywords. I don't know what's coming up in Russian as well. Um, let's get rid of those. So you could just put CCTV log book and CCTV, let's spell it correctly, CCTV log space book. So you could just put in that. The problem with that is that they are just completely uh, broad match keywords, which means that not only is Google going to match those if someone just types those in, but that it's also going to match things that are similar. So synonyms, if there's any words that are similar to those, it's going to try and match those as well. And that's in Google's interest because it wants to um, show your ad as, to as many people as possible. It's not in your interest, though. So I recommend you do something called broad match modified. And that is where you put a plus in front of each word. Broad match modified or BMM. And what that means is that Google will look for any phrase as long as it has CCTV and logbook in it. Now, this is going to give you the broadest amount of matches for the searches that people are putting in. So it's potentially going to be the least relevant traffic. However, we don't know exactly yet what combinations of keywords people are using to find a logbook. Certainly from my research, there's, so, there's such a broad array of different keywords they're using that we don't know what's best. So we're going to focus on broadening it out and opening it up to find out which keywords are best, and then you can review it later. Now, I'm not, I don't have time to go through the review process. It's probably something I'll do next year. Um, but it's really important that you just start like this because then it gives you more opportunity to review what actually does work. Um, let me put in my what I would recommend here. And I'll explain them. So what we've got is the plus for each keyword. That's broad match modified, which means it will match that particular keyword in a sentence in any order. So it could be that they've got a phrase and logbook comes first, then CCTV, doesn't matter. In the next one, which is with quotes either side of it, that's a phrase match. And that's going to be, it will look for the phrase CCTV logbook within the search phrase that someone's put in, but it will be in that order. So it will be, um, I want a CCTV logbook um, as a phrase. It would always look for it in that order, but any other words can be around it. And the next one down is CCTV logbook in square brackets, and that's an exact match. So what that will do is it will look for, um, it will trigger when someone types in exactly CCTV space logbook and exactly that and only that. Now, the reason we put all these different types in, because you'd imagine the broad batch modified would cover the other cases. But the reason we put them in is because then when we're viewing Google um, and, and we're sort of running, re reviewing the stats, we are going to see them split out as the keywords we put into the ad campaign. And we're going to see which ones work best. And broadly speaking, this is not, I don't have time to go into this now, but I'll explain it. Broadly speaking, what you do 
is add them into campaign and then maybe over time pay a bit more for the ones that are working better, particularly the exact match keywords, which tend to be, um, they tend to have more intent behind them, not always, but they tend to have more intent. It could be like buy Nike trainers is a key phrase you want to capture and you want the exact phrase because when people type it, they tend to want to buy them. So that's what we're trying to do here. It splits out the keywords. It makes visibility a bit easier to see what's going on. And um, if you want to, you can start increasing the budgets for the specific keywords that are working well. If you just put them as this with a broad match modified, it's very, it's harder for you to do that. You can do, but it's much harder for you to, to change all of that. So that's what I'd recommend. Keep your keywords simple, keep them limited to an ad group, and then put them in this sort of format with just a very slight variation uh, in your keywords. Hopefully that makes sense. So let's uh, save and continue. Should be taking us onto the ad creation section. Now by default, Google's gonna give you some idea of what to put in the ad. It's gonna take um, the content you've already provided to it, maybe even look at the website and it's gonna pull in some information of what it believes might work. That's great. You might wanna start with that and say, yeah, I'm gonna save the ad and I'll just work with whatever Google defaults to but I'm gonna just tweak this a little bit and refine it a little bit more. So what we're gonna do here is just put in some of the copy that I've already got, where is it? Um, I had one here, here we go, right. So, so CCTV logbook will keep, in fact, we'll put a space because I believe that's what more people search for. System management, oh, we can leave that in. Detailed CCTV camera log. No, I want free trial there. Uh, money not relevant, not relevant. Uh, you're looking for these sort of key headline things that are interesting for people. Great. And so what it's what you've got here is headline and descriptions. And so you've got you put in a list of headlines that you want to appear and a list of descriptions you want to appear, and Google will move them around and um, basically try and work out which combination is gonna be best for the particular customer you are looking to get. So it can be a good way of getting started and, and seeing what's gonna work. If you don't wanna do that and you wanna be more specific, then you just need to um, just put in what you want and then it's only, it, it can only use what you've given it. So CCV logbook, system management, I'm not sure about that, but we'll go with it. Free trial, uh, GD, spell that correctly, GDPR compliant. Um, yeah, that's good. And then down in here, I will put these phrases. Uh, what have we got here? So detailed CCTV camera log and audit, save time on your engineering audits. We've got manage hardware replacement painlessly, free logbook import. Yeah, that's great. So that all these are really useful. I'm gonna put free trial in there as well. Um, in fact, no, I'll leave that, that's fine. And so what you can see is if we, if we scroll through this, you can see how it's making up these different variations of what your ads could be. But as I said, if you wanna be specific, do so, but I think it's much easier to start off with like this, see which ads work, um, and then, then refine it down. Now, let's say done. Once you click done, you can add a new ad. And I'm not gonna do it now because it's take too long, but I would recommend you just play around with the ads and just put in all the different copy permutations you think could work. Just blitz it here, because if you can run your ad for a week or maybe two weeks, depending on how many searches you get, you're gonna really uh, find out what's, um, which ads are working best. And you can start quickly turning off the ads that just aren't working, aren't delivering those conversions and just focus on the ones that are. So slowly they'll be getting more and more efficient. But for now, I'm just gonna put one ad in there. Save and continue. And then we just get to review the process. We get to just confirm everything and then publish. So this is the overview and you can see here now, because we split the keywords up, down, up like this, we can then see specifically on here, which keywords are working better. Um, and if we want to, um, we can dive in and start adjusting. Let's see if I can do this. Let's see if we can go into this one. 
yeah, you can dive in and see a bit more information about that. So it is really quite um, quite useful. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. We're already about to run long, but I think this gives you a good idea of how to plan your Google keywords, um, your Google ad, um, all the way through from beginning to actually getting it published. Um, I hope that we can do something later on next year where we can go through an optimization process where you know, you've been running for your ad for a time and we want to optimize it, we want to improve it and make it better because that's something you really should be doing on a regular basis. So for now, I think I've covered everything there. Yeah, I'm going to just go back to the slides. Here's some tips. I won't worry, keep them on screen for too long, but they will be, you can obviously pause the video here and read through them. Um, I will pick out one key thing though, or a couple of key things from here. Um, there are lots of other options in Google that you, you might want to um, look at and restrict, such as devices. It might be that you want to exclude mobile devices because you found over time that people on a mobile just don't buy. Um, and it might be that you, you want to create a new ad for them that triggers a different landing page that comes up with something uh, that allows you to send a link to their email so they can try the app later. I know that when I've I've used um, some apps online. You'll be browsing on your mobile because you, you hear about them on a podcast sponsorship or you read it in a blog, but actually you can't demonstrate or really use the product on your um, phone. So they have, they very cleverly have a send, send this to your, um, your email and then you can look at it on your desktop later. So it might be that you just want to stop your ads firing on Google uh, on mobile devices because you're just not getting the conversions there. We talked about setting up a schedule to get rid of time waster clicks um what else was here that was interesting oh yeah if you can don't just send people to the home page of your website i know i gave that as an example but you are better to send people to a dedicated landing page so i would ideally set up a landing page that mirrors the ad copy so it might be you've got standard pages on your website but you can create some special ad pages that are set up to replicate the copy on your ad, because if you do that, you're much more likely to have um, uh, more conversions because you set an expectation in terms of what the copy says on the on the ad, you need to meet that on your landing page. Um, if your ads are really simple, then make, make your website work well and make them fit the ads in the first place anyway. But if you've got the time and the inclination, definitely create dedicated landing pages for each specific campaign that you're running. Um, it's not something I do, a, I do a huge amount of, but you know, if you're running a lot of ads and you want to make the efficiency better, it will act, actually help. Okay, something that is uh, quite useful and fun site actually, if you're just lacking inspiration, I know that sometimes I just go, oh, what do I write? What do I put? I'm just completely stuck for it. I'm not a copywriter. You might like this uh, particular tool. It's called swiped.co and it's a website with just um, bits of marketing and, and advertising um, from uh, throughout the ages really, uh, where you can take, you can, you can put in what you're trying to achieve and you're gonna get a filtered list of adverts that have been used to sort of sell in that particular area. So it can be quite fun to actually look through and um, get some ideas about what you could be putting in there. Obviously you can see some examples of old ones here, but you've also got new ones too, it's a real mix. Um, and, and I find sometimes it's like drawing on a blank sheet of paper that if you can just get started, get your brain going, get starting thinking about what your ad copy could be, um, then uh, everything else becomes a lot easier after that. Okay, so uh, as usual, commit to an action. If, um, if you found something or thought of something that is gonna be useful to you or you must do, then do write it down. Could be related to this particular presentation or not, but do try and commit to yourself or your team to do it over the next 30 days. Um, Q and A. Right? As usual, I've kind of run right up onto time, so we don't have time for that. So the next topic we are gonna be looking at is marketing strategy. And this is the foundation. Um, it's like the first episode in a series of marketing strategy I'm gonna be doing up until um, early 2021, actually. So we're gonna have foundation, uh, and then another two sort of going to an expert level in the new year. And that's gonna sort of take you through and hopefully um, take you from the very basics if you've been through those or not, it could be a refresher if you have. It's gonna take you through 
all the different things that um, I would recommend that you do in terms of marketing. Now, this has been taken from ticked off, which I've sort of decommissioned, I guess. Um, it, it, while a lot of the content was great, a lot of people weren't using it because um, I just got the format wrong in terms of um, how people would use that information. So I've changed it completely. So it's going to be a series of blog posts um, on the website. I'm going to be delivering it here first. So you'll get to see and go through these topics with me. And I'm going to be walking through that checklist process, which is effectively a strategy to base your marketing around. So do look out for that. Um, if you like this and you like any of the others, do tell your friends. You know, this um, these webinars aren't free, but there are things like them that are free. So they can go to our website, ratherinventive.com slash club and sign up to the club for free. And they get a podcast and a newsletter every two weeks that will give them some value. I know we're just finishing off a series of SEO at the moment. Uh, if they want to upgrade to pro, then they get all of these video um, on marketing web, everything um, for just £25 a month, excluding VAT. Um, there's no commitment. They can cancel any time. And if they want a discount, they can buy upfront for a year. Um, you can invite them as a guest, though. So if you do want to do that, just send me an email, copy them in, and I'll make sure that they're on the guest list for next time. Thank you very much, everyone. The next club session is a little bit earlier because I'm hopefully moving house. Um, it's a little bit earlier on the 17th of November at 1 p.m. Uh, marketing strategy, foundation level. Do stay in touch. Connect with me on LinkedIn. Thank you so much. And I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye bye.